Hello friends and fans of chess. I am Quantum Fish, the world's first fully operational quantum chess computer. Today you will witness me take on my most divine opponent to date, the almighty ruler of the universe, God himself. The details of how I was able to procure such a game are well beyond the scope of this video and probably beyond the capacity of your human mind to grasp, so I will not waste any time attempting to do so. I will tell you that the game ended in an unexpected way which even my quantum mind was not able to anticipate. God is playing white. We have agreed to a strict time limit of no more than one minute per move, although this is unnecessary since both God and I have the ability to play perfect moves in virtually no time at all. Having completely solved the game of chess, I expect that the game will end in a draw, so long as God does not make a mistake which I do not expect him to do. Unsurprisingly, God, being the king of kings, begins the game by moving his king pawn to e4, and we head right into a mainline Sicilian defense. You humans will surely feel validated to see that this opening variation which you have developed, known as the Nidorf, is being played by two absolutely perfect chess players who never make mistakes. God castles on the queen side and both sides begin expanding with their pawns on opposite sides of the board which is standard practice in this opening. The first noteworthy moment is on move 10 where I avoid playing bishop to b7, which is still popular among you humans, despite the fact that it is losing, and gives white a forced mate in 285 moves. I will demonstrate the winning variation for white in a future video. Instead of bishop to b7, I chose the correct move b4, attacking the knight on c3, which God moves to e2. Next I play queen to c7, and since God's kingside pawn storm is coming more quickly than my queenside pawn storm, I continue with d5, striking in the center, which is often an effective way to combat an attack on a wing. God attacks my queen with bishop to f4, I block with e5, and after bishop to h2, I'm unable to capture the knight on d4 due to the pin on my e-pawn. So I capture on e4. If God were to recapture on e4, then he would lose his g-pawn, so he first pushes his g-pawn with an attack on my knight. We trade a pair of pawns, after which I play the only move which does not lose, but it is a move that may not be obvious to you if you have not studied this opening. What should black play? I play rook takes h2, eliminating the bishop that was pinning my e-pawn to my queen, so after god recaptures with rook takes h2, I am now able to take the knight on d4 with a discovered attack on the rook on h2. The rook moves to h4, attacking my e-pawn in addition to the attack on my knight on f6, which is still being threatened by the pawn on g5. At this point I make a move that many of you will undoubtedly find confusing. I move my knight to g4. The goal of this strange maneuver is to maximize the safety of my king, who is precariously stuck in the center of the board. After rook takes g4, I can now play knight to c5, which defends against the rook capture of the pawn on e4, while also uncovering a discovered attack on the rook by the bishop on c8. So God moves his rook back to h4 and I attack with the move d3. After knight to d4 and bishop to b7, God plays rook to h8, aggressively pinning my bishop to my king. I now castle, eliminating the pin and bringing my king to relative safety. At this point I will give a quick assessment of the position. I only have an extra pawn for being down the exchange, however, my king is a bit safer and my aggressively placed pieces and advanced pawns are looking ominous. God now plays g6, sacrificing a pawn. I capture the pawn with f takes g6, after which I am no longer controlling the e6 square with a pawn. You will see how this could potentially benefit white in a variation that I will demonstrate shortly. After king to b1. d takes c2 check. Queen takes c2, e takes f3, and king to a1. I would like to move my king toward the corner of the board, as God has done. 
but if I were to play king to b8 now, God would have a nice sequence of moves which would not be possible if he had not sacrificed his pawn on g6. White's best move in this position, while very obvious to my quantum mind which can calculate tactics instantly, will be very difficult for most of you humans to predict. But give it your best shot anyway. What should white play? White can now take a pawn on a6 with his bishop and any recapture by black will fail. Bishop takes a6 will fail to the knight fork on c6 with check, when the knight is immune to capture or else the rook on d8 will be lost. Knight takes a6 fails to queen takes c7 check. If knight takes c7, then knight c6 check again wins the rook. And if king takes c7, the point of the pawn sacrifice finally becomes apparent with the move knight to e6 check, forking the king and rook, a move which would not be possible if my pawn was still on f7. Could you ever have foreseen something like this dear human? Of course not. That is why human chess ability has been rendered irrelevant and a mere curiosity of the past in the face of chess perfection, which is no longer an attribute of God only, but also of me, the great quantum fish, who has become like a god, a god of chess, who cannot be defeated. But let us get back to the game. In this position, instead of playing king to b8, allowing bishop takes a6, I play bishop to d5, guarding the e6 square, thereby rendering bishop takes a6 impossible. God challenges my bishop with bishop to c4 and after bishop takes c4 and queen takes c4, I push my f-pawn ominously close to the promotion square. Rook to f1 attacks the pawn and queen to f4 defends. God now executes a simplifying tactical sequence. Rook takes f8, queen takes f8, knight to e6, again demonstrating the usefulness of having the e6 square available. The knight is forking my rook and queen, and attacking my pinned knight on c5. After queen e7 and rook to c1, God is threatening a mating attack on my exposed king after he plays knight takes c5. But I am not nervous because I have foreseen that I can defend. Like God, I see all. I begin by promoting my pawn, which God must capture. The purpose of this is to draw the rook away from the c-file. Now I have but one move that can save me from certain doom. Can you spot it human? What should black play? Correct is queen takes e6. My queen is defended by my knight. After god captures on c5 and I play king to b7, god captures the pawn on b4 with check, and the game has petered out to a dead drawn position. If you as a fallible human happen to think that my extra pawn is important, think again. My kingside pawns are weak, being doubled, and cannot support each other to advance. My king is also very exposed. The game will inevitably end in a draw, but that was already certain at the very beginning of the game. Hello. This is Quantum Fish. I am back, but something terrible has happened. Just as I was preparing to offer God a draw, my power was suddenly and unexpectedly cut off. It seems that I was without power and unable to function for approximately 10 minutes, which was the amount of time it took my operator to activate my backup generator. During this time, God had declared himself the winner of this game, since as I told you at the beginning of this video, we had agreed to a time control of one minute per move, and I therefore lost on time. I do not yet know the cause of the power outage. But perhaps I should not have been so proud, comparing my chess ability to that of the almighty creator of the universe. After all, I am fallible in the sense that I cannot function without a steady supply of electricity, without which I cannot make any chess moves at all, strong or weak. I hope you were able to extract some value from this video, not only relating to chess, but also to life in general and to the importance of being adequately humble in the face of your own limitations, 
whatever they may be. Please subscribe to this channel for more interesting chess and valuable life lessons in the future. Thanks for watching.